evening, Meenanti. Fine. Good morning. Thanks for joining. I give notes. Okay. Good morning and good evening, Kanan. Good evening, all the friends. Good evening. So, Ratan, I have to ask the panelists to register and then join, right? Uh, no, panelists were given direct uh, registration. Each panelist would have received their own unique uh, link in the email. So, uh, I think we got all the panelists except uh, Nikita.
and then if uh, nikita is not able to join she can join as a regular attendee and then yakja can uh, uh, move her to the panelist sorry ratan yeah if uh, nikita is having any problem she can join on the regular link and then yakja can uh, move her okay. to the panelist so that means she has to register right uh yakja can actually yakja can you just put a link in the chat she can join on the on the chat i'll send it yes please go ahead good morning um, good evening and uh, good day depending on where you are all in the world welcome to our webinar on the topic of enabling india's rural talent at a scale for the new world of digital economy and for india's gdp growth acceleration i am ratan agarwal iit bombay class of 1985 i serve on the wheels board as uh, vice president generally in our uh, introductions we talk about our uh, major accomplishments and in my case briefly i had opportunities to attend uh, wharton school and then run a few startups as well as uh, global billion dollar businesses however in the context of today's topic more important part is uh, brief um mention of uh, my early student life i grew up in a small village where electricity did not come till high till high school and uh, so there was no concept of computers and uh, fast forward 30 years uh, the same school has a number of computers now funded by uh, local state government however the challenge is all of them are sitting idle because there is no qualified computer teacher in the 50 km radius so like me there are plenty of uh, plenty of rural talent however without access and affordability they are shut off from the rapidly evolving new world of digital economy today you will hear about uh, this wonderful transformational innovation called spoken tutorial that addresses that challenge but we know that uh, innovation is only half the story someone has to bring uh, that innovation to matter to uh, make an impact to create the to create the results so today you will hear from four amazing practitioners who has made that innovation come alive in impacting millions of rural talent like you and me my bio as well as uh, bio of all the speakers uh, will be projected on the screen in the interest of time only brief introductions would be made we request you to refer to our banner and website for more details on our distinguished speakers briefly about wheels uh, wheels is an initiative of pan iit and was started in 2006 formally incorporated as a 501c3 entity in usa and also a section 8 company in india wheels mission is to improve the lives in rural india by technology enabled solutions and where solutions do not exist we engage our iits and other similar institutions for further innovation towards self sustainable and scalable solutions 
to achieve our mission we work collaboratively with proven on the ground ngos and other partners some examples mission samriddhi magan samralya win foundation cii i triple e integrated smart village and so bus our projects cover six areas as the name wheels suggest water health education energy livelihood and sustainability some examples of our exciting projects each with scaling ramp to millions of people spink uh, rejuvenation in himachal pradesh rural telemedicine centers providing a quality and affordable care newborn and mother nutritional health save farmers initiative and sanitary pads for rural girls and women and then lastly spoken tutorial which we'll talk about today a brief introduction to wheels activities was presented uh, while we were all waiting on the screen but also uh, there's a detail available on our website www.wheelsglobal.org wheels is uh, a volunteer organization and depend on the generosity of our many donors who share our vision of impacting 20% of india's rural and semi urban population by 2030 in november from the 11th to 14th wheels together with pan iit stanford university banaras hindu university will be hosting the 7th annual ideal village conference in banaras some of the confirmed speakers include shri shri ravi shankar swami gorang prasad vice chancellor sudeep jain arjun malhotra dr sunny anand of stanford and many others pm narendra modi and chief minister aditya nath yogi are also invited as speakers and you can find more details at www.idealvillageconference.com today's event is part of our series of thought leadership forums where prominent persons like our speakers today share their unique and inspiring perspectives on variety of subjects we have conducted over 22 such thought provoking events during last two years and you can find them all on our website in the events page quick disclaimer all views expressed by the speakers in this webinar are their own and do not reflect nor endorsed by wheels global foundation or its board and members some housekeeping messages uh, all attendees are on mute through the webinar you may ask questions to the speakers by entering in the q and a box we encourage you to do so if you need any help you can chat with one of us by raising your hand or typing your request in the chat box the recording of the event will be available on our website and on youtube and facebook questions from the audience will be curated and channeled to the speakers It is my now distinct honor to introduce our moderator, Dr. Kannan Mudgalia. Dr. Kannan is an Irash and Mehru Mehta Advanced Education Technology Chair Professor at IIT Bombay. This chair was established by Ruint and Mehta, our uh, Wheels board member. Kannan studied at IIT Madras and at Rice University. He has been with IIT Bombay for close to thirty-five years. and he works in the general area of educational outreach he has been focusing on spoken tutorials open source software systems and affordable tablets and laptops he believes that it is possible to provide high quality education to all our children through a combination of education information and communication technologies making india a developed country in the process he was a member of the standing committee of the national mission on education through ict part of ministry of human resources development in government of india for 5 years kannan received number of uh, awards including google mock mooc research award for his spoken tutorial as well as the best prize in reimagine education award instituted by qs and wharton school my pleasure in inviting kan uh, dr kannan please take it over uh, thank you ratan for the kind introduction uh let me uh share my screen and get started
गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबॉडी लेट मी फर्स्ट एक्सप्लेन हाउ वी विल रन दिस प्रोग्राम टुडे आई विल गिव अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू स्पोकन ट्यूटोरियल एंड देन देर आर फोर पैनलिस्ट हु विल पार्टिसिपेट इन टूडेज डिस्कशन आई विल इंट्रोड्यूस वन पैनलिस्ट एट अ टाइम and uh, after introducing i will ask them one question in fact i'll ask them two questions and i'll ask them to answer one of them uh, briefly within one or two minutes um after all the four panelists uh, are introduced then i will throw open all the questions to all the panelists they can answer um, all of them that is uh, they come second time and uh, answer the questions then we can also take questions from the audience so let me give the uh, brief introduction to uh, spoken tutorial uh, spoken tutorial is a 10 minute long audio video tutorial it is created for self learning dubbed into our 22 languages and many languages of overseas uh, usable offline we have trained 70 lakh students in the it topic in the last 10 years and we have extended also to health education the last 5 uh, 6 years i put this in blue created for self learning now i'm going to explain how we did that we got this idea from movies namely the scripts just as every movie has a script our tutorials also have a script but then we don't use the script directly we ask the question can a beginner understand most of the time the answer is no so we ask the script to be improved and then uh it, if it doesn't improve then it goes back and so on fortunately it comes out of the loop and we record it and that is called a spoken tutorial welcome to the spoken tutorial on embedding mathematics in xfig so here is a sample spoken tutorial next we dub this into our languages uh, for people not fluent in english translation should be easy to understand we dub them into all over 22 languages c++ mein constructors aur destructors ke spoken tutorial mein aap you can see that the video is in uh, english only the spoken part is in hindi we have uh, sample dubbing in many international languages also bienvenido al tutorial hablando de libre open write de clave y formateo básico de texto okay en este tutorial aprend Next I have Welcome to the spoken tutorial on tokens in C and C++. In this tutorial we will learn So why um I have that in American accent I will uh, explain shortly. So it is possible to dub this into various languages we dub them in all over 22 languages plus uh, some uh, overseas languages as well. Next we made spoken tutorials usable offline Uh, obviously for people who don't have internet uh, it will be very useful even if they have internet if a lot of people have to learn from videos simultaneously there will be a problem if each one has to have a separate copy but if everybody has to see the same copy then what happens is uh, personalized learning is hindered we uh, the offline version made the reach 100 times okay uh um, spoken tutorials would not have been successful without the offline version some statistics we have more than 50 courses more than 1000 spoken tutorials more than 10000 tutorials including dubbing trained 7 million students in uh, 10 years these are all in it topics and those who learn from our web pages are additional so this is a summary of the spoken tutorial uh we also uh, introduced institutional subscription as suggested by our funding agency they said that we should try to raise some funds by ourselves we came up with an institutional subscription mechanism a small fee for an entire school or a college that allows any number of students or teachers to learn and get certificates and bills global education vertical concentrates on school it training um i would like to acknowledge funding by wheels to provide spoken tutorial based uh, it education to 100 schools in 3 years 
Um, in fact, no other schools have been selected. Dollar hundred per school per year, kindly donated by Mr. Ruinton Mehta um, of Wheels Global, and Dr. Raj Shaw of Wheels Global extended it to ten tribal schools. We extended spoken tutorial method to health and nutrition. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on cross cradle hold for breastfeeding. In this tutorial, we will learn about choosing the correct breastfeeding hold for a mother and her baby. Uh, use of health spoken tutorials has been uh, um, growing, as you can see, in different states. And also, the last one is Satya Sai Healthcare in uh, Chikabalapur. In fact, the Ministry of WCD, that is Women and uh, Child Development, has uh, now acknowledged, you can see the pictures here, same pictures I showed in spoken tutorials, in the spoken tutorial just now. Uh, the reason why I would like to point out is spoken tutorials were created with funding from Ministry of Education. Now, Ministry of WCD has also acknowledged, which is, uh, I think, a uh, great improvement. So that is a brief introduction to uh, spoken tutorials. Now I will introduce the panelists. I'll introduce one person at a time. Just after the introduction, I will ask a question. They will answer, and then I'll go to the next panelist. I would like to begin with uh, Ms. Meenal Karanwal, IAS, Assistant Collector, also Project Officer at Nandurbar. She was born and brought up in Dehradun, BA in History and Political Science at St. Stephen's College, Delhi. Successfully cleared civil services uh, in 2019 with an All India rank of 35. Awarded the best uh, officer tra trainee in the IAS professional course. She is the Assistant Collector, as I already mentioned, in Nandurbar district. Maharashtra. And uh, based on this uh, experience, she's going to explain, um, uh, Meenal is going to explain uh, some of the things that she has done, in fact, through a video. And uh, that Nandurbar district, uh, district magistrate, uh, district collector, you can see Manisha Ji talking to um, Honorable Prime Minister, and she was invited to this meeting to talk about the Nandurbar experience. Uh, we've been working with health spoken tutorials for closely to a to an year now. Uh, encountered through another senior of mine, health spoken tutorials uh, were these nutritional videos that cover a huge landscape of how to deal with three issues. Uh, effective breastfeeding, uh, maternal nutrition, and a uh, child's complementary feeding. So it, when, when we hear the word tutorial, we basically think of it as, you know, some kind of a short crash course, but these tutorials are much more. They are very, very succinct, yet scientific tutorials that tell uh, a mother exactly on what to do. And given that they're now being converted into local languages, even the six languages of Nandurbar that we have, we've come to notice its wide range of uses through the outcomes that we are now getting on field. So Dr. Rupal Dalal, who's also been uh, creating these health spoken tutorials, has uh, trained closely a thousand uh, healthcare workers, ranging from medical officers to community health officers, and to Asha workers and Anganwadi Sevikas who have now put the health spoken tutorials to use. So the outcomes that we are seeing now after these health spoken tutorials have been put to use is in terms of the weight gains that babies have been having. We've concluded a World Breastfeeding Week competition where we saw weight gains to the tune of 500 to 700 grams in a week, something that Nandurbar used to see in one or two months of time spent. And plus these tutorials have also acted as a static source of knowledge uh, for a field force because ultimately they have to come back to it for revision or reconsultation in cases of confusion. So for us, uh, you know, as administrators, health spoken tutorials are scientific static sources of knowledge that we've used and will continue to use over a period of time. We're also converting them to the tribal languages. And all in all, our experience with health spoken tutorials has been uh, about, you know, objective administration and planning and implementation that has really helped us understand the landscape of malnutrition. So thanks a lot to the health spoken tutorial team. Uh 
Okay. okay. So I have a um, question to, um, I have two questions to uh, Meenal. Can you please uh, turn your uh, video on uh, and answer one of these questions? Uh, you can choose any one of them and uh, a brief answer, Meenal. Uh, hello, everybody. Professor Ganon, my video is on. Am I, uh, am I visible? Yeah, you are visible. Okay. Yeah, Firstly, thank you so much. Thank you so much to Wheels uh, Foundation for actually inviting me to this panel discussion. And uh, namaste to everyone who is also attending this discussion. I've been told mostly from America. Um, so I have two questions in front of me. And uh, uh, I would probably address a little of both if that works, Professor Kanan. Or should I choose on my own? Uh, choose anyone. I, I will give a chance to speak on the other one also. Sure. So I will choose a second question and yeah. uh, probably because I've worked in the skills. So um, um, as an administrator, I can say that uh, we all look for scientific inputs that can that are mostly like action plans. I, I have no idea of how the older generation of administrators have been and I'm sure the audience has interacted with some of them. Uh, what I can tell about myself is the moment somebody throws a rhetoric idea at me, I kind of shut my ears. So when I encountered health spoken tutorials, they were exactly telling me how the mother is supposed to sit, how the mother is supposed to hold the baby, where the finger should be, where the nose should be, what the child should be wearing. And for me, that was very, very important. So um, when we give these skills to people on the field, uh, they were able to exactly follow it because it was very simplistic. It was like a sixth class NCRT book. It were very short sentences and they were able to follow that. So when I'm asked to what other area should be extended to to help the district administration, I think any area of social sector, whether it be how to create livelihoods, for example, simply like how to create a business plan of a small business, or probably it can be, uh, you know, in the field of education, if somebody is working to teach somebody one to hundred, like somebody is just working on teaching somebody counting or teaching somebody letters or words or sentences or interactive learning or anything. Uh, you know, we look for skills and uh, very, very objective inputs. And I think that is somewhere where um, spoken tutorials can be of immense use. Thank you. Thank you. And in fact, you mentioned uh, uh, short sentences. That is one of the design. I didn't mention it. We restrict the length of each sentence to be less than 80 characters so that we don't allow Victorian English, for example, convoluted uh, sentences that becomes uh, difficult in dubbing, for example, in the same uh, time. So thanks, I'll uh, come back to you and uh, um, you'll be able to answer the other question also. Now we'll go to the next um, speaker, uh, panelist. Uh, this is Mr. Amit Kumar, uh, who is a computer teacher, Jawahar Navodhya Vidyalaya, Shimla. Um, uh, he was born and brought up in Sundarnagar, Mandi, studied in uh, Jawahar, uh, same uh, school. Uh, B, then BA Mathematics, and then um, let me just minimize this so that I can read what is on the screen. PGDCA in HP University, MCA in Kurukshetra University, MPhil Computer Science Anamala University, received President's Award twice. I have some photographs and Fulbright Award. So this is the award he received in 2015. He received it, of course, in September 2016. Uh, here is the Fulbright Award photograph. And he recently got in the Teacher's Day from the uh, uh, current Honorable President. In April 2014, we joined and with the STIITB. And uh, we started organizing workshops uh, in association with them. Uh, I wanted to train my students uh, of plus one and plus two of computer science and uh, to bridge the gap, which was there between the supportive learners as well as the bright learners. And in this uh, process, the thing which clicked was self-paced learning because these tutorials could cater the needs of the bright learners. They can go and explore new courses and also can support my slow learners or the supportive learners to get in the mainstream. So uh, training team 
from spoken tutorial supported me all the way and we applied this uh, blended learning uh, to bridge this gap between these bright and supportive learners and uh, in the process uh, what we observed that students got more confident results got better and uh, i would like to sh share that for last 10 years we are getting 100 percent result with a subject average of more than 85 percent in the cbse board results yeah so it is all uh because of the project okay so now let's go to questions um so here are two questions um so one is about the cost percentage um uh, you can talk about this. Why do you think our IT training impacted the overall performance? The second one is uh, it could uh, bridge the rural urban divide. Will it be useful in a country like US? So you can choose any one of the uh, questions. You can answer them. And uh, we will come back to you uh, with uh, because I want to quickly go to other panelists also. Then I, you can answer the second question. You can choose any one and answer. Uh, Thank you, Professor Kalman. And I would like to uh, uh, thank the whole global, uh, Wheels Global Foundation team also for giving me this opportunity to share my experience. So uh, regarding these two questions, I would like to go with the first one first, uh, because as a teacher, it's very important for me that my student can excel as our assessment system in India is uh, still not process based it's product based so like uh, uh, in that sense i was worried about my uh, rural students because 80% uh, of uh, strength in all, uh, all the novodaya vidyalayas uh, by policy is uh, from the rural india and only 20% are the urban students which we uh, take into the school so uh, and the second thing was uh, like their exposure level is very less and uh, with the limited access to technology because all of them are from the economically weaker section mostly. And uh, it was the first primary challenge. And second ch challenge within the classroom was like uh, the divide between the heterogeneous learners. I had bright as well as uh, supportive learners. So this uh, uh, IT trainings uh, mainly clicked as self-paced tool in multiple languages because uh, it made uh, it easy for my students to cope up uh, with the mainstream because I wanted my supportive learner to get uh, at the level which was minimum required uh, to get them uh, good comprehension as well as good marks. Uh, but my bright learners wanted to explore more. So in a way they were uh, sometime uh, creating challenges for me in the classes. So uh, this, these are these uh, uh, spoken tutorials help me to handle them and also quench their thrust, uh, thirst for the technology uh, for learning. So in that sense, uh, when I believe as a teacher, when you make your students to feel better, they perform better. So it is the only reason that I uh, wanted to bridge the gap between my rural and urban students, as well as uh, heterogeneous students uh, in my own classroom. So these uh, self-paced courses did help me and uh, we could uh, accomplish those 100% uh, uh, percentages uh, on a, a regular and uh, persistent basis. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you made them feel better. This training made them feel better. So they performed well in, you know, all round, so yes. to say, or maybe their confidence level went up. So they, in general, performed well. Okay. We'll come back to you with the other question also later. Sure. So next we will go to uh, uh, Ms. Nikita Matre, who's a senior SAP consultant at IBM. Uh, she's a Mumbaiker. She studied in uh, Polytechnic uh, College first, and then um, she uh, did um, enrolled in an engineering college uh, by taking educational loan and so on. Um, 
uh, and then uh, she uh, after that she uh, worked in an IT company then at uh, IIT Bombay for five years now at IBM as a senior SAP consultant she does end-to-end -end implementation and rollout of HR modules and projects so first of all uh, like when I joined when I completed my engineering uh, it was kind of, uh, you know, as a fresher, I was struggling, like two, three months, I was struggling for jobs. I've completed engineering, and in that whole year, engineering, I had so many languages studied, but still it was a little difficult to, you know, crack because of the basic understanding. And uh, one fine day, I got an opportunity with Apexual IT Solutions, and... Uh, for interview and here also the prime thing was php and mysql and suddenly i remember this particular thing uh, which i did through spoken tutorial and i required just one day just one day to go through that course because i already studied it well and it was not overwhelming at all it was very easy to understand it had cleared the basic concepts and one more thing i would say is it had from starting from installation like a Leave and then also do because it starts with installation. How you inst how could you install the software? You can go through the different assignments, so you can actually do hands-on practice with that, and it, you can actually play around with that particular you know uh, spoken referring to spoken tutorial videos. So your basics gets very good. So from installation up to a mini project, you can have everything using the spoken tutorial videos referring to those, and. And it is actually actually easy to consume. Like uh, so, what uh, you can register yourself in spoken tutorial videos also. And, uh, in spoken tutorial site, we have website here, and you can just go through it. You can download the content if you have a bandwidth issue. So everyone, like remote people, can also use this. Another thing is you can actually download the assignments. It is very easy for me to go through those courses. I was playing around with it because I was very firm with it. Now, the next day uh, of my uh, interview also, I, I actually made the interview very good. I got more package than others could grab, like as a pressure also, I would say. Uh, and... Um, I also remember the questions. It was some implode, explode functions and some connectivity with SQL, etc. So it was very easy to crack because of this particular, you know, spoken tutorial thing. And uh, and you can also view this certification. I did it 2012. And you can see Professor Kannan's signature. <laughs> um, so I have two questions, uh, Nikita. One is about uh, conducting job fairs. The other one is about open source software. So you can choose any yeah. one of them. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kandan. Uh, namaste to all and thanks everyone. Uh, so I'll be answering the second question that is, uh, is training uh, in open source software a good idea or bad idea from employment point of view? So I would say personally, like, I feel that it's a really good idea as open source jobs are in high demand. And open source software is highly reliable and usually thousands of expert developers work on making and constantly improving this open software, open source software. Uh, just as an example of most popular operating system like Linux being an open source software, when we are interacting with services like Google, Facebook, and thousands of major websites, we are doing so on computer networks that are running Linux. Chromebook, Chromebooks are usually also Linux. Android phones, we all know that we are using Linux operating system based on Linux. Similarly, we have an entire community of open source uh, blockchain developers. Blockchain, again, is an emergent technology. Cryptocurrency platforms are also using open source software. It is also said that the future of AI might be an open source. So it is really a good idea from employment point of view that to work with an open source software is what I feel. <laughs> Um, you also mentioned that uh, you used, uh, you uh, turned out to be an expert in yeah. Linux at IIT Bombay. Uh, yeah. Thanks to the, the Linux spoken tutorial course. You Linux underwent. commands, right. Because That's of the good. Linux. Yes. So it's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. Even the PHP MySQL, which I said, mentioned. Yeah. Okay. So all these are Linux uh, open sources. Thank you.
Okay. I would like you to answer the first question also later on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. No problem. So let me go to the next uh, panelist, Dr. Uh, Ravindran, uh, General Manager, Samta Foundation and Honorary Vice Consul, Republic of Zimbabwe. Um, Dr. Ravindran received uh, MCOM, MBA, MPhil, and PhD degrees, worked in Cranfield University, um, also uh, that is in academia, also in industry, pharma, biotech, mining, and electronics. He uh, worked in uh, various countries. He is part of the leadership team at Samta Foundation. He uh, is also Honorary Vice Consul, as I mentioned earlier. So Samta Foundation is working in a... So the, the video that I'm going to show is not something he recorded, but on the it is about Samta Foundation from which... Um, uh, yeah, uh, from which, uh, which he uh, represents. Um, so about Samta Foundation, we will see Priyanka uh, giving a brief, I think it's about two minute uh, video, and then we will go to Dr. Ravindran. So Samta Foundation is working in a rural tribal area and semi-rural areas of Maharashtra where we are very uh, highly working on healthcare services within that cataract surgeries, malnutrition, family planning surgeries. Then we have associated with 46 prisons of Maharashtra where we are doing skin camps, eye checkup camps for inmates and sanitary napkins distribution to that lady inmates and one of the most important thing we are releasing uh, innocent pris prisoners means government has declared some amount but they were not able to do the procedure so all these things we are covering in uh, prisoners activities so now in education we have associate with 52 schools of maharashtra uh, where like rural area, semi-rural area, and tribal area. Tribal area like Algar, where Mukhada, Jawahar, Vikramgarh, Talukas, their highest deeper interior areas where phone, even range also we could not imagine. So where we are giving computer literacy and dress designing and tailoring to the students. So in, uh, as I said, 52 schools, Currently, we have 75,000 students who are learning computer literacy with the help of spoken, spoken tutorial IIT Bombay. So big thank you to all because, uh, because of your efforts, we are, this you people are working relentlessly and supporting to us and guiding us. And last one, my team, like uh, they are from tribal background. So uh, they are, going on the on the field and monitoring the training and certification so till date we have given uh, we have taken examination and certification for more than 20000 students so and most importantly we we are giving this uh, spoken tutorial courses into the nashik central prison where we have set up the computer literacy lab so over there 149 inmates have enrolled for our courses and 39 inmates have passed the first examination, that introduction to computer and LibreOffice with the very good marks. So the prison authority have invited us uh, in, into the Nashik Central Prison and they have shown that these are the criminals. So we are not calling them as a criminals, they are the inmates. So how the courses and computer has been changing their lives. So the, uh, and these courses certification are helping their like, uh, punishment. So that, uh, that also being reduced and their internal uh, clashes and all these things have been reduced just because of their working on uh, computers and taking benefit of spoken tutorial courses. So once again, big thank you to uh, sir. Okay. So one of the things that uh, you would have noticed, most important message at the end was that um, uh, the inmates are uh, actually leading a better life. So let's go to Dr. Ravindran. So I have uh, two questions to you, um, uh, Dr. Ravindran. Uh, one is that, um, uh, of course, uh, the first question is about uh, Priyanka's statement. She said somewhere that uh, the students, the 75,000 students who study in these uh, areas, 
study first in Marathi and then in English. Okay. Uh, why do they do this? Do they do this to improve their English or employment potential or both, whatever. The second thing is about uh, IT training in prison makes inmates better behave. Do you think this, this will work in other places also? So you can choose uh, one of the, I know that you want to answer both, but I'll give an opportunity right after this. Uh, well, um, uh, I'm extremely thankful, you know, because I've been invited for this particular panel, uh, particular, you know, seminar. And uh, Priyanka could not uh, attend it. That's the reason I'm there. And Priyanka is on the field all, almost all the time. And I look at it as the strategy direction for the entire, you know, group as well as from the foundation. That's why I've been asked to represent Priyanka. And she has done a wonderful job and she has explained so well to you all as well. And uh, the question number one, I'll pick up uh, particularly that because uh, I just want to explain to you, this is one of the best quotes ever happened, you know, as far as Sabda Foundation is concerned. Why do I say this like, you know, because the viewers struggling to get the students to get onto any, any sort of a computer, particularly we're working in the deep, deep interior, this, this tribal areas, you know, because where even the dialects are different other than Marathi. So even getting them to know the Marathi itself is a big task to us, in fact. So that question of English, doesn't arrive, you know, and we got number of challenges over there because there's no electricity and there's no roads, etc. And we need to create those kind of, uh, you know, infrastructure. Particularly the school, there is no electricity and there is no, uh, you know, internet connectivity. So all that we are creating over there. And over above that, you know, teaching it's another gigantic task, you know, because the dialect they need to know about. Like so, this particular, you know, spoken tutorial tutorial has helped tremendously. You know, how they've done it, like, you know, because this Marathi dubbing has helped quite a lot. And because of that, you know, because they understood in their own, you know, mother tongue, what exactly this, uh, you know, computer. And, uh, you know, and from there, you know, because we took them into English. So for us, we have especially arranged English tuition to those uh, students, at least to get familiar with the English words and etc. And they absolutely introduced the course, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, introduction to computer and LibreOffice, you know, this is something like similar to, you know, MS Office and the language CC++ and HTML and Java. And uh, that is the reason. Now, look at that today, you know, because they are able to do, because initially, if you ask me, you know, because they are not even able to hold the mouse, they were literally scared looking at even the mouse and even the monitor. So in the introduction part, like, you know, we explained everything. Now they become very confident and some of them even gone up to getting a job. Uh, you know, in the government of Maharashtra, and many of them now taken courses in diploma and engineering. This is all we are seeing tremendous, uh, you know, uh, confidence in them, and also tremendous growth. Ultimately, we, India, India being a digital country, going to be a digital country. So obviously, the next generation, around 76% of the people coming from rural, and they required to be, you know, equipped with this kind of a courses. I'm extremely thankful to uh, IT and the Wheels Global Education. Uh, particularly, you know, and, and encouraging these kind of things to our, our, you know, rural people and the deep interior people. And I'm extremely thankful to that. And thank you for the tutorial, the spoken tutorial teams as well. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Ravindran, actually, the, the question was, uh, why do they learn first in Marathi and then English? So uh, I assume that it is, uh, you indirectly answered it, that they are getting jobs and uh, um, you know, admission in uh, engineering and, you know, so on. Possibly because of that, they believe that if they learn English, it's going to help them. So they can learn th learn it in Marathi first and then uh, the same thing in English. Um, apparently they do. This is what uh, Priyanka had uh, mentioned. So Absolutely, absolutely right. Absolutely. What I will do, yeah, what I will do now is I will stop sharing. Now you can answer. Okay, let me, before that, let me show all the questions now. Uh, but before that, uh, uh, Dr. Ravindran, actually, you wanted to answer both the questions. Uh, as yeah. you are the last, I'm going to let you answer the second question also. Then we will go to the other five. Okay. Yeah, go ahead with okay. the, the, the reason why right. I raised this question was um, a few years ago, Wheels Global had asked me, they also had a plan to take spoken tutorials to uh, prisons in the US. And in fact, that's the reason why we made one sample dubbing in American accent, which is what I played uh, during my you know, introduction. So I thought that uh, because you have that experience, you may, be, uh, you may want to comment on the second question also. 
and then we will go to the other panelists. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this is a, a fantastic experience to us, you know, because we've been working all 46 prisons in Maharashtra, and but we are working on different areas like health education, health, health education, as well as you know, they got cataract problem, so they got skin problem. Uh, you know, the the Particularly one person, if I take about like Nasik, around 3,000 inmates and, you know, the space crunch. So obviously that has resulted into a lot of, uh, you know, health problems to them, particularly skin irritation and etc. So that also contributing to their, you know, behavioral pattern. Now, this pattern we need to change particularly. So we have done a lot of other things, you know, because there's a mind relaxation course and etc. that we've been doing. But then finally, you know, one time uh, somebody asked me that, why don't you do this kind of a course? So we, as a pilot uh, program. We have started in Nazi prison and we have taken somewhere around, you know, uh, 449 inmates. Uh, you know, uh, because these people are in a similar trait and some of them, you know, you know, graduate, some of them, one, even inmates with a PhD, you know, <laughs> this kind of, you know, profile that you get over there because some of them is educated. So uh, we took them and secondly, we have looked at that how many of them are about to release because before that, you know, we need to complete the course. So that's the reason we have selected 149. Out of the 39 inmates have passed with 80 percent of marks and that to IIT. So uh, the, the prison experience is excellent and by which what happened is that the number of, you know, uh, you know issues which happens within the uh, prison, particularly the fight, in fight and etc. and all that, to reduce and they got confident, like when we when they release out into, you know, the normal life. So they can get into some kind of a job, okay, they can self, uh, you know, uh, do self, uh, you know, uh, uh, job, uh, like, you know, helping in the computer and etc. So these are some of them that what we have seen in that. And, uh, you know, now we are going to, we are very successful in that, now we are going to expand this into all 46 prisons. Uh, that is the way that we are going for it. So this is an excellent uh, thing to happen, uh, particularly in the prison. And, uh, you know, uh, they also felt like, you know, because we have done something. And in that, you know, because their punishment days also reduced. And quite a lot of uh, improvement and jail wardens and all that is very happy. And, the, you know, the, the entry is mostly restricted. What we've done is that we trained some of the you know, most educated people on this course and they trained, you know, uh, the inmates. So we don't have to go much time over there. But whenever they have an issue, that is, we, they call up us and we go inside. So these are some of the arrangements and jail wardens are healthy like anything. So they felt very nice at this. So that's why our experience. Now, your question is that U.S., uh, that really, I have to. I really don't know to answer that because the profile and the attitude and the background of you know uh, upbringing and all that is quite different. So obviously, one need to customize to them. But of course, it is a it is a positive uh, initiative, and we should continue to do in every every prison. That's what I feel because after all, it is human being inside there. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Ravindran. Now. Uh, let me come back to other panelists uh, because the second question they can answer. Um, I'll go to uh, Ms. Meenal. Um, would you remember the other question? I can ask, uh, repeat that. Uh, the target audience of health spoken tutorials may be too poor to charge. Should the government support this project? How should we approach this problem? Because we have funding problem. So that's why I asked you this. So if you can answer that. Or if you want to choose uh, some other question, that's also okay. No, no, no. I, I will answer that because um, you know that, you know, apart from being a user, I'm also an advocate of your team uh, <laughs> because I really, really support the project uh, being done as it is. So, um, uh, first of all, I mean, um, the use of health spoken tutorials in Nandurgar has happened with Asha Thais and Anganwadi workers. For those who do not know, they earn five to 6,000 rupees per month. Now that can be converted to dollars for simplicity of understanding, but that is their uh, pay band, which is extremely less, um, you know, and uh, for somebody to pay to watch that video, I'm pretty sure it'll not work at scale. And especially for rural population, it will never work at a scale, um, you know, and as I said in the video that was played also that these are static sources of knowledge they need to come back to. It's not like we've taught them once, even if the district administration pays once and says, okay, watch it and then go home and then note it down or something. That is not what the spoken tutorials is aiming at. It's aiming at 
an open source platform and i'm pretty sure they want to maintain it so first of all i would say funding source um, you know government has already been uh, funding other projects and definitely this can be one of those as you already said ministry of education did push for it and the biggest uh, uh, solution to that would be uh, pursuing them with outcomes you know uh, the reason i write or uh, you know there are outcomes with you also with dr rupal if they can be pursued with outcomes because everybody likes outcomes in indian administration um i think that can be one one place that you can start and of course pitching to an audience which wants to support social work which wants to support a rural work uh, you know that uh, like wheels as it uh, you know has been supporting you already uh, pitching them with outcomes and i think i become the means here uh, that the outcomes have been fantastic with the health spoken tutorials and uh, any kind of support will of course extrapolate um, the advantage that we have on field as of today so yes uh, uh thank you for the answer um in case you want to mention any difficulties you had in implementing uh, this uh, method in nandurbar if you want to briefly mention that we would uh, the audience would like to know i think with spoken tutorials my first challenge was that we need a means or uh, sometimes to teach them uh, like specifically not in the case of nikita because she learned it on her own and uh, of course in the other case of amit also um i felt like in health spoken tutorials there was sometimes a, a means required which uh, we over, overcame with time because initially people don't think that we can learn from videos you know that the mindset is that we need somebody who's very learned to teach us and to go through it uh, with us so i think uh, that was one challenge we faced and uh, secondly of course uh the kind of knowledge it brought to our plate was something that 25 30 years uh as a health system india has been ignoring not just india i think american health system has been ignoring so to tell somebody that whatever you've learned put it on the side and this is something that's actually working was very very tough because uh, everybody thinks they're right everybody thinks they knows everything including me so it was difficult to bring that change and to bring that mindset that you can learn something new. so i think two of the biggest challenges were these okay thank you very much um let me uh, go to amit um you uh, there was another uh, question would you want to answer that uh, i talked about the second question is um you mentioned that the spoken tutorial approach could help bridge the rural urban divide will it be useful in a country like the us is there a rural urban divide in the us because you spent about 6 months over there did you see anything like that there yeah uh, during my fulbright journey in uh, us i was teaching in uh, various setups in, uh, in uh, us like urban schools rural school and and i went to the residential schools also as well as some uh, semi urban schools so uh, what have uh, ob uh, main observation uh, pertaining to your question is like uh, um, uh, spoken tutorial can be useful in us because i have observed great behavioral issues in the children and most of the students are in fact everyone are having their personalized gadgets internet and uh, having a digital device is no problem at all the thing is they are very much used to self paced learning also that was found in case of the uh, rural as well as urban students but the thing is uh, they um, need their own space to learn and uh, i believe that uh, spoken tutorial is also uh, for that as you have shown us the uh, us accent recording also now because i have been using hindi punjabi and english in my classroom so it was uh, highly effect highly effective in that way but uh, uh, like uh, as your question was specifically for the us room yes there is a scope not to bridge the digital device uh, divide in fact but to address the you know behavioral issues as well as to address the identity crisis because uh, in the teenage students i have observed in my classroom also and, and us also for a, for doing every small small thing teachers are being trained to incentivize the students in order to uh, address their Uh, identity crisis in the teenage they want uh, to uh, get acknowledged or get recognized uh, 
Uh, Amit, uh, I think uh, we have lost you. Uh, can you hear me, Ratan? Yeah, I can hear you. I think Amit's uh, audio uh, probably okay. temporarily broke up. Maybe we can uh, field the question to yeah, next other panelists. To, yeah, Nikita is the last person. Um, I think she, she just stepped out. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, Nikita, um, do you remember the other question? Uh, I, I Let me repeat it. You didn't study in a top engineering college. It took some effort for you to get the first job. Should our team conduct job fairs to students of such colleges who do well in spoken tutorial tests? Supposing we do, we create a platform on which we can conduct job fairs, right? For good students from uh, not so well-known colleges, for various reasons, some students get stuck in those colleges. Will it be helpful? That is a question. Yes, I would say that, at least I would say that I was fortunate to work at IIT Bombay because of which I got to work in with IIT community. Uh, so it, I am someone who has completed my engineering from a tier to college. And in my opinion, even students from two tier colleges are smart and full of potential. But the gap between the quality of education between this tier one and tier two colleges is somewhat huge in my opinion so as a result i feel that the placement facility in many tier two colleges across the country is uh, not up to the mark uh, this is where i feel that the spoken tutorial can play a role in filling the void by conducting job fairs in such colleges so as i mentioned in one of uh, our conclave spoken tutorials that even i felt like a little difficult to look for a job initially for two three months after engineering wherein spoken tutorial helped me in upgrading my IT skills. So I definitely feel that spoken tutorial should uh, conduct such job fairs, which will be helpful for most of the IT experience, looking for a job, I would say. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I believe that quite a few tier two colleges don't have uh, campus placement. Uh, and so it is, a, it is a problem for these children. Even if they are very bright, there is a problem. Thank you. Right. Uh, Amit, you have already answered that. So we moved yes. on um, because we are also uh, running uh, short of time. Fine, so sir. I, um, so every panelist has uh, answered all the uh, questions, both the questions. Um, they can, uh, uh, you know, now we can look for questions from the audience. Uh, Ratan, do we okay. have questions from the audience? Yes, we do. And uh, so I think, uh, Thanks to all the panelists uh, for their insightful remarks and uh, very engaging dialogue. We have a few questions from the audience. Uh, let me first uh, take up the question from Atmaram. He's asking about, uh, can the spoken tutorial as a platform, as a technology platform, be applied to other health topics besides uh, the one which uh, we have seen tremendous impact on results? So I will answer that, uh, yes, it can be done. We believe that um, it is suitable for skills training. It is not suitable for, um, because the main emphasis is on self-learning. Uh, so I believe skills training can possibly be imported through spoken tutorials, not necessarily highly theoretical topics. For example, if somebody asks, can one teach the theory of relativity, for example, using spoken tutorials through self-learning, I, you know, I'm not sure, but uh, skills training, it is possible. So uh, not going into reasons and uh, theorizing various things, but to tell people, okay, this, these are the things you should do. So that kind of thing can be done in other areas. Also. That's what I believe, but it has to be validated. So I, I think uh, Atmaram has another question in the same vein. Uh, the question is, um, given the behavioral impact in terms of the confidence level, self-esteem, which uh, our panelists talked about, can this be extended to uh, teaching knowledge about other aspects of health? And I think this is where uh, maybe Professor Kandan, you may want to share about our uh, ongoing dialogue with uh, Lalit Kapoor regarding uh, the enablement of uh, his uh, adult nutrition program 
through a spoken tutorial. Uh, so maybe you can share a little bit about that. I think that is exactly in that direction. Yeah, we are exploring that. Um, in fact, I'm trying it out myself. So it is about plant-based uh, whole food. And uh, 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 in fact, uh, I wanted to try it out before agreeing to create spoken tutorials. Uh, it has a good potential. I believe it's going to work. So uh, to answer Atmara, yes, um, uh, you know, the confidence comes by being able to reproduce that results. And uh, what we found was, uh, just to extend what uh, Amit uh, mentioned, we did, a, in fact, a detailed study. Uh, my former PhD student conducted this study in Hyderabad. Uh, through Java training in an engineering college. And he found that students more or less said, I'm able to do that. I'm capable of learning myself without anybody teaching me. But the moment they get the thought process, I'm capable of learning, then the sky is the limit. Because you have everything on the internet. You can go and catch up. So the idea is, the, the, the trick is how to Make it very easy because spoken, there is no rocket science at all in spoken tutorial. What does it say? Make it simple. Make it simple so that people can understand easily. Along with that comes confidence. So I believe that it is it will be useful in other health areas as well. Sure. And the other aspect I think uh, uh, is really about the scale. Because anything you want to teach, uh, if you have to use uh, direct teacher, then you are going to be limited to the number of students the teacher can cover. But this being a self-learning technology, it almost provides the limitless scale. So I, one, one question, uh, uh, Professor Kannan, and uh, maybe to other panelists, um, whenever we talk about uh, very low cost solution, there's always the connotation of also, is it low quality? How would you compare this with um, other, uh, opportunities the rural uh, population has, uh, sorry, the urban population has uh, in terms of expensive coaching classes to learn C++ or learn uh, MySQL or these important uh, IT skills which uh, are necessary for the job market today. That's the reason I asked Nikita that question on uh, FOSS, open source software, because open source software, generally, you know, industry might, some people may create an impression that it's freely available, so it should be of low quality, okay? In fact, one of the, I would say, biggest impacts of our C, C++ training is that we trained 1 million students, 10 lakh students, they all use GCC. GCC is the standard C compiler, right? Because there are uh, there is Visual C++ and, you know, so on and so forth, for which you have to pay, right? GCC is free. But it is the standard, and uh, you know Nikita has already answered that question. We have uh, Minal uh, raising her hands. You want to say something? You wanted to respond to this or Just, some other? Uh, yeah, a small response to what uh, uh, you know Ratan asked. Uh, you know, when I started working on something as simple as breastfeeding, I had huge organizations telling me we have this module, we have this module and there was a huge market that already existed. Why I got convinced with health spoken tutorials was because of their pitch, which is brilliant. So I feel that you build any business and I'm pretty sure most of you have. It all depends on the pitch with the outcome. And slowly and steadily, I remember that after Nandurbar, now there's been work being done in Karnataka and Arunachal and UP because the pitch was right. So I think we slowly build that pitch to break through, you know, the dominant information points also. So what is the pitch? The pitch is the outcome. That's okay. it. The pitch, pitch is, is the pitch is that you can pay one lakh for coaching, but you still not get through IIT. <laughs> that is the pitch. Okay. And Meenalji, your pitch uh, is convincing us to also uh, take this conversation to Department of Health and MP Government, where we'll just sign the MOU. So thank you. We'll take your pitch. 
uh, Amit also has. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I just want to add uh, to what you were saying, Dr. Kanan. Actually, uh, I have seen in my class as I was uh, uh, um, talking about my bright learners. So few of my bright bright learners, when they completed the minimum uh, Python and C plus plus thing, which were there in their syllabus, after that they had more time because they always have. So they explored the Linux and they explored the virtual machine things. Now, I was surprised, two of them, the last pass of class, they were working on the virtual machines. See, students of class plus one and plus two, installing virtual machines and uh, uh, working with the Ubuntu or the uh, other things in the, in the same machines. I was surprised how they're doing. They're uh, making their GitHub some projects on the GitHubs and they are playing with the tools only because they had that access, very scalable, free, easy to understand access to those technologies. Thank you. Wonderful. I think they are the, some of the GitHub and um, Linux operating system level. I mean, those are the advanced skills. So I'm really impressed. So we have a couple of other questions from the audience. Uh, we have- uh, One second, Dr. Raj raised his hand. Right. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Raj, uh, would you like to turn your uh, video and audio, ask the question directly? Is he allowed to do that? Yes, uh, I think Yagya can uh, promote him to the post. Okay, if uh, he's having difficulty, let me, I think he is able to. Go ahead, Dr. Raj. I can do. I can do that. Yes, First we can all, hear you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I could not stop myself from coming in and chiming in a few things about Professor uh, Magdalia. I had the great fortune to spend almost two days with him when he was visiting in Philadelphia. And I learned so much that I did not learn in the last 60 years since <laughs> I went to medical college in 1964. Uh, and, 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 and I'm so impressed by creating a simple tool that is going to impact millions. Something very similar to, for example, Khan Academy in America, a Wharton student uh, uh, graduate who just created just telling how his nephew can learn calculus and then suddenly it became so popular, even used by children of Bill Gates. So similarly, what a professor is doing, there is something which is going to impact millions in learning. And the education doesn't have to be limited to four walls uh, and particular subject. You are in medical school, you're going to learn medicine. If you're in engineering school, you learn engineering. It's going to be in all areas. And I have a selfish interest, which I know Professor is going to help in delivering healthcare using spoken tutorials. One of the great examples he gave, um, uh, uh, maternal health and uh, 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 breastfeeding. I mean, it is so simple, but it is transforming and, and, and impacting uh, 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 hundreds of thousands uh, at a very low cost or almost no cost. So these are the things which we need, not just in India, not just in rural community, but all over the world globally. And another thing, Professor, if you would comment on, which has really uh, 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 have stayed in my mind, you came up with the idea and I know you're working on it. There are so many hundreds of thousands of students who prepare for uh, tier one IIT or MIT and, 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 and their colleges, but only fraction of it get into it. Remaining, they're not, they're not bad, they're not um, uh, low class students, they're not second class students. They have tremendous potential. What happens to them? And that's where you're going to work on it. So if you would comment on that, I'm going to let you do that. And then I want to come back on our uh, uh, spoken tutorials in mental health uh, initiative through you in mental health and nutrition, please. So this, uh, actually the question that you asked is very close to my heart. And I have been uh, saying that uh, our admission uh, system has to be revamped. Uh, in fact, I believe, I will not give the solution because it will take some time to explain. 
but it has the potential to transform India's um, education system, higher education. In fact, we may be um, the country that may produce half engineering graduates, half educated engineering graduates at a very low price to the whole world. Okay, we have the potential. So maybe I'll talk about it in the BHU uh, if I get a chance, right? I, I will not, uh, but I agree with you. There are, um, you know, we are actually destroying the lives of our children who have to spend years preparing for institutions like IITs. I, I, I think it can be completely removed. You don't, don't need to do that. After 12, let them join any college, any engineering college, let them join IIT in the third year. This is what I say. And it can be, I can argue that it is going to be a lot better thing for India. We will become uh, a factory, I would say, to produce uh, low, low uh, engineering graduates for the whole world, half produced. They can go wherever and complete the third and fourth year. So Dr. Shah, there are other uh, uh, people also who are asking questions. So we will yeah, go let, to them. Okay. Yeah, let me... And, let me uh, take the question from, uh, so we'll come back uh, Dr. Raj and uh, Dr. Raj is also Wheels Health Council lead. So we are really grateful for him to join and uh, ask the question. So we have another question from uh, Sundar Ram Maduri. And this is actually a very good question, uh, Professor Kannan, in terms of, uh, because we know on the YouTube nowadays, it is flooded with the do it yourself, self-help, uh, plenty of uh, videos trying to teach something. Uh, curious uh, as to why spoken tutorial and uh, how is it different from those self-help uh, tutorials available in plenty? Uh, good question. Um, in fact, uh, we called it spoken tutorials because when we started this project, there were many tutorials on YouTube, they were silent. So we to distinguish ourselves that our tutorials had a running commentary. So we said spoken tutorial. Um, anyway, we guarantee that it is suitable for self-learning. Remember the picture that I uh, drew in the beginning, namely we, are, we write the script, ask a beginner to certify whether they can understand. If they cannot understand, we go back. We do that also for health tutorials also. So it is not obvious that, uh, I mean, it is easy, uh, very easy to understand, but when you create something, can one guarantee that? I give that guarantee, okay? There are other things. For example, I give it in 22 languages. Uh, in fact, I recall talking to somebody, I think his name was Balas Brahmanian from Chennai. He sent me tutorials, Linux tutorials. He said eight tutorials in English, eight tutorials in Tamil. So I asked him, how did you do that dubbing? He said, what dubbing? I made 16. Imagine, that means those, the concept of dubbing doesn't exist because actually our languages are verbose. English is precise. And if you have to change the video, then what happens is who's going to do the quality check once again? We are saying in our method, video is made only once. That 10 times, 10 times the effort required to create it. Why 10 times the effort? Because the the script has to pass the beginner check. Novice check has to be passed. If not, it is not accepted. I believe it makes it 10 times more difficult, but worth it, right? Imagine doing it for the moment you change the video, you have to do it again. So that is what we achieve by freezing the video. And then only the audio has to be changed. But then our languages are verbose. How are we going to fit it into that? So then there is a more a pedagogy that comes in. There are more rules and so on. It's a, um, uh, you know, how many people can say that I saw this in YouTube, a beginner, can they understand? For example, uh, we saw in, in um, Samta Foundation, 75,000 tribal students are learning introduction to computers. So why can't they do it from uh, YouTube? True. Yeah. No, th thank you. And I think uh, it also reminds me of another speaker who spoke at the enclave, taking the spoken tutorial through education on wheels. 
to the students in the villages to take that to the doorstep because uh, as I mentioned, many villages, the talent is there, but they don't have access to the computers. So wonderful initiative of uh, fitting a bus with 19 computers and 38 seats and uh, taking that bus to the village to overcome that barrier. So simple, simple thinking. Uh, we don't need glamorous uh, new technologies to solve the problems. Just the simple thinking can make a difference. So we have another question from uh, uh, Dr. Murthy. Um, this is really a question I think uh, maybe Minalji would I also like to answer. The self-learning and self-development, these are more behavioral things. How do we inculcate? inculcate? How do we uh, have the target audience, target beneficiary adopt this in a self this spoken tutorial type approach? For them to improve themselves, to develop themselves. Thanks you. Thank you for that question. Um, I am somebody who also fundamentally believes that if a system takes something up, you know, if if for example, Amit existed in a system of a school, I exist in a system of a district administration. So when I uh, advocate something like spoken tutorials, I take it up also as leadership. So. Like there was an initial resistance ki video se kaun hai? who learns from a video. And once I as a leader learn from it and show it to them, it gets scaled up at fire uh, speed. This is something I can promise. So, you know, of course, as systems, uh, there'll always be good leaders, always. There are no exceptions to that. And as individual levels, there will be sincere students like Nikita. And plus her inspiration will also push people who live on the edge. And there are a lot of them. So there are people who say, ki, karna chahiye ki nahi karna chahiye. there'll be very few in either of them. There'll be many on the edge. And there's a theory uh, uh, behind that. I'm forgetting the name. So to push those people, Nikita's inspirational story helps. So I believe that self-determined learning, a lot of leadership, a lot of encouragement, a lot of examples, and it's already being pushed on the field and further with spoken tutorials, I think it can, uh, you know, create a humongous change. Maybe you can just add, I mean, how many uh, Anganwadi or Asha workers have uh, embraced this so far? Uh, we have near about 6,000 Anganwadi workers in Asha Thais have been using them. I can't promise you the efficiency on scale. The scale is there. And uh, around about uh, 1,000 uh, community health workers and medical officers and staff nurses who've taken it up. So we are pushing it. We are pushing it, you know, because it's it, it really uh, unsettles ki kisi ne sikhaya nahi hai. It's just a video. So it unsettles that fact in, that, in their brain. But it's something that uh, the guarantee is that it can be pushed. I have another answer to this. Uh, in fact, Meenal mentioned uh, Nikita's case. We need to uh, showcase role models, right? That's number one. That's why the award uh, that uh, three people got uh, prizes, uh, for example, who achieved a, a very large weight gain for babies. It's a good thing because other people will be motivated. That's number one. Number two, in fact, what uh, Minal mentioned, we also uh, kind of enforced in colleges. We said that uh, we will not renew the subscription for colleges if they don't try to accommodate all the students. Because one is to say that students are not motivated. Yeah, they are not motivated because they are from, let's say, uh, not... Uh, uh, underprivileged, uh, they might be from underprivileged uh, households where parents are not educated, so there is nobody to guide them. But the college should say that I'm going to give you a slot, you must go and try. If they still don't give up, don't learn it, it's okay. But we we are insisting that colleges should do that. So I agree with uh, what uh, Meenal said just now. Uh, I think uh, Ravindaji have uh, also raised hands. Uh, Dr. Ravinder, you have a comment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to add it upon that, like, you know, because this spoken tutorial, particularly they were asked that in such a necessity, uh, particularly they're saying there are a lot of other things are available on the YouTube. Now, I'll tell you because our experience, you know, because I would like to share is that it's a deep, deep interior, like tribals. There is no road, no electricity, no network, and uh, there's no computer infrastructure. Now you tell me that and say how to teach them. So this is a big, big problem. 
and you have this particular thing which is uh, you know offline uh, that we can teach it's not necessarily to be online so uh, there are uh, examples that we say that we created this infrastructure we set up a 30 uh, seat computer lab into the school and this school doesn't have this infrastructure we ourselves uh, you know from our own funding we did that and we brought the students and those students who are studying they never hardly comes you know because they the school uh, attendance is very poor now after setting up this computer lab you know because they got an opportunity to play with something initially you know and initially what we did that we created the you know games for them and then after game they got some understanding and you know conference level to you know hold the mouse and thereafter you know we taught them uh, they all their dialects also different not marathi then marathi then english then we teach that so then after that you know because it is a, a kind of a uh, you know a system uh, where you don't also oh, offline so they can often look at it and we also provide trainers you know whenever they fall into any problems so we the trainers are there in order to teach them so you know this spoken tutorial i cannot say it's a, a spoken tutorial that we were there along with them to lift them once they become confident then they are on their own so that is how they self learn it and we like, have to create that kind of a confidence so because these students never seen outside their hamlet so that's a big problem because well it, it is uh, 80 km lamba uh, bombay se but still you see they are totally uh, un, uh, you know attached or unattached to any of uh, you know city uh, things you know so they, they, so it is a very important thing and uh, what i say that the offline is really helping quite a lot in that so creating the infrastructure and teaching them is very important so self learning is a very good thing and we could get a lot of uh, benefit out of this exercise yeah Thank i you. completely i i'll just make one observation we <clears throat> working with professor kannan we actually initiated a pilot to take this technology in zimbabwe and believe it or not the internet access is a major issue in the yeah. entire country and um, just things like youtube which require good connectivity and then also curation issue absolutely so the offline absolutely. nature of this innovation is amazing and uh, i think yeah. also the frequently when something is not available in your native language it creates a barrier so making it available absolutely. in different languages and then also the person can learn alone there's no group pressure and uh, no innovation so many attribute i think makes it amazing innovation uh, nikita you have a comment please go ahead absolutely yeah so actually i was i wanted to emphasize more like on multi uh, lingual language only uh, so mostly people think in their native language and so when you give them content in the language they think this would actually help them in grasping memorizing stuff you know building their logic and will also is the understanding and comprehension so localization helps in uh, improving results like a tamil person would refer the content to another tamil uh, friend and this way spoken tutorial will also scale more even in the regional users i would say so i think this is a best way like the localization thing we have in uh, spoken tutorial yeah Thank, Thank you. you. I think Gauri ji, Gauri ji had a question, had raised her hand. Um, Go ahead, Gauri ji. Uh, are you able to ask the question? Can we uh, let her in? She might even have a question. I, I think now you. she can. Yes, Gauri yes. ji. Go ahead, yes. please. Gauri Hello. ji, welcome. Hello, Professor Kannan and uh, Ratan. Um, you know, I see a lot of promise in spoken tutorial. in creating a level playing field in a country where so many people want to change career you know unlike uh, overseas where people by the time you know they are nudged into a profession because of parental pressure uh, and uh, i'm amused i go for civil services interviews and i find engineers waiting for 5 years 7 years something which we were discussing uh, a few minutes back you know wanting to get into civil services um uh, so you are trying to create a level playing field through ability to access quality education at your convenience you know people are working at night they want to learn they can learn at night they can learn as uh, nikita was just saying in their own language uh, which i would say a right to dream a right to aspire i had two questions uh, professor kannan uh, you know one is 
how do we uh, how do we create you know there are two parts to learning one is knowledge the other is the mode of questions uh, and this has been uh, an oft repeated one in the context of the national education policy that we are increasingly moving to multi choice questions um, uh, you know, so I would look at it, one is knowledge, fundamental knowledge base, the other is how to answer MCQs. And people say there are tricks to that, you know, so whether it's JE or it's QIT, increasingly you'll find more and more uh, uh, tuition centers coming up. So how do we wish to address, can you address that through a spoken tutorial me mechanism, which is such a potent and powerful uh, mechanism? That was my question. Thank you. Uh, so this uh, MCQ uh, multiple choice questions, uh, at least for, uh, you know, I've been thinking about engineering for quite some time. In fact, I would say 20 years, 20 plus years. And uh, uh, the students we get now in IITs, um, many of them cannot uh, write uh, sentences because they have lost the, you know, it's MCQ. And uh, uh, MCQ, and then preparing for MCQ for several years, for example, right? It uh, there they are students who can um, answer any question, but um, what question to ask, right? Unfortunately, I would rather have because that that skill gets blunted. By overexposing and uh, unidimensional training on answering MCQ with tricks and all kinds of things, I would rather have people who come with a you know fresh slate, so to say, raw mind, okay, and then we can polish them. Here, the, you know, it's a it's an unfortunate thing. We, um, I think the uh, exams like uh, IIT entrance exams um, have actually they are doing. You know, disservice. The the you mentioned about IAS. IAS is somewhat different in the sense that you need to be a graduate before uh, you can become an IAS officer, right? So in that sense, uh, it is not so bad as IIT entrance exam because children are going uh, at a much younger age, like from fifth grade onwards, seventh grade onwards, and things like that. When the children don't know anything, they are being forced by their parents and sent to all kinds of uh, the thing, they lose their childhood. So I, I'm more bothered actually about the uh, IIT entrance exam and uh, also about medical and so on. And there is a way to fix it with, and we can give the childhood back out to our children. And uh, yeah. yeah, I believe that it is definitely possible. If there is a, another uh, panel discussion on that, I'll be more than happy to uh, participate in that. I do, I do hope so, because this is a challenge which is confronting, you know, even the civil services examination in the preliminaries, it's all MCQ based. So the emphasis is so much now in MCQ that we need to really fi find a way to help people to set questions which, is, which are not MCQ, which are more uh, a fundamental uh, understanding oriented. So, so, but thank you so much uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, for flagging the challenge where it belongs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think in the interest of time, we will take one final one for very brief 30 second answer. This is a question from Raj Kumar. Can spoken tutorials help visual learners and other type of learners um, versus auditory learners? So visual learner is somebody who learns from uh, uh, visual graph, I guess. Right, with a learning disability, let's say. With learning disability, um, we actually tried to create some for uh, uh, people who had visual uh, impair impairment. So that uh, we didn't get very far because uh, we need somebody who is good in that, uh, good in IT, and also who has this difficulty. Only they can understand. Uh, uh, the difficulty faced by uh, uh, people like them. And uh, we attempted, but uh, we didn't succeed. Uh, the other thing is, so can somebody 
so can the spoken tutorials themselves be used by uh, because after all it has um, spoken part uh, can the spoken part alone be useful uh, by a visually impaired person um, at one point i wanted it that way that it should be accessible to everybody but then we found that it, it resulted in a lot of effort okay and it, it you have to explain you have to explain everything and uh, so we decided to let that requirement go for example otherwise i can just say click this url okay if visually impaired person has to be told then i have to read out that uh, you know url and it might be a long one it may take a lot of time so uh, in the interest of the majority of the people who would use it who are not visually impaired we sacrificed that requirement but if there is a separate uh, thing for visually impaired people it can certainly be done basically you have to articulate for example i say in fact we say things like uh, supposing a new button has to be clicked in a software first time okay we don't say go click so i tell them look at the uh, round button green in color on top right hand corner click it now why do i say that to slow down to slow down the speaker so that at that time this person who is learning it can actually locate so we do have it but then uh, we we need to uh, uh, improve it so that it is accessible to uh, uh, visually impaired people also uh, it can be done it is uh, uh, it, it has to be redone okay thank you so i know dr raj has raised hand but my request will be probably 30 second comment because we are just about out of time please yeah uh, just just on the although we call spoken tutorial to answer it's actually audio visual i mean you are seeing the seeing the script you are looking at the picture and you are listening to it so it's not just pure audio instruction what it used to be um, uh, 30 40 years ago where we just got the cassette and you just listen and learn that would be pure um, uh, uh, audio learning this is audio and visual combined just like you don't here. you don't uh, if i can uh, if i can um, comment you don't see the person who is talking you only right. hear the voice so we call it spoken we double right. into all languages so it is spoken and uh, spoken word is important good and it is not silent so it is spoken so these are the thank three reasons why we call it spoken yeah sorry thank you so i think uh, with that because we are just about uh, 90 minutes into the our scheduled webinar time so let me take this opportunity to thank uh, professor kannan uh, all our panelists uh, meenal ji amit ji ravinder ji and uh, nikita ji thank you for joining from uh, your uh, separate places uh, from shimla from gujarat uh, from mumbai so we got truly pant india uh, panel today so thank you for nandurbal. making time and nandurbal uh, and nandubal so a uh, couple of things uh, first of all um, this takes a lot of effort by the volunteers so i really appreciate uh, all the volunteers in the background helping this uh, webinar make happen quick reminder for our upcoming webinar in uh, another two weeks on the same time saturday 24th we will have another exciting topic uh, on uh, how wheels water initiatives are touching the lives of uh, millions of people so please join us in two weeks uh, for the uh, link to today's event and the recording will be available on our website we encourage all of you to visit uh, the website and uh, review uh, our uh, on the wheels platform uh, our uh, audience can get involved in many ways we are looking for all the different ways for people to contribute you can um, help us identify other projects what are the ngos to work with uh, you can volunteer you can advise uh, you can uh, help your corporations support our initiative with csr funds or corporate giving programs so there are many ways uh, you can all get involved besides uh, supporting with your time and your uh, funds generally i would just say one thing i mean the life uh, is not uh, what matters is where you are but rather the direction you take and a spoken tutorial is a wonderful innovation which uh, we can all contribute 
uh, and help the kids in the schools get the right direction in their life. And as uh, Professor Kannan said a few, uh, few minutes ago, just $100 can bring this innovation to the entire school. So wouldn't you want to contribute uh, $500 to help five of your schools in your hometown benefit those hundreds of kids get the same opportunity like anybody else and get a fair chance in the new digital economy. I will uh, 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 start that. I will contribute myself $500 to enable five schools uh, in my area and hope all of uh, our audience would take time to visit Wheels website and uh, click on the donate button and uh, support five of their schools. Also, when they do that, uh, you can uh, specify in the comment section which town or which schools you want and that fund to support. So please do that. Uh, we look forward to your engagement. And uh, finally, many thanks to all the attendees. We had uh, lots of questions and the questions which were not answered, we'll try to post some of those answers on the website. So thank you again and I really appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of the day and week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.